Hey guys, welcome back to the channel DZ Can Toys. Hope all of you guys are doing well. Here on my channel, I do reviews and share my thoughts on some of my favorite toy releases. Today we'll be looking at something very special. It is the 1-6 scale Toy Seiki Valkyrie Chronicles Salvaria Bliss Seamless Action Figure. So let's take a look at the box first and get the unboxing started. Here we have a 1-6 scale Salvaria Bliss unboxed. Now let's start with the background information of the toy company as well as the character per usual. In regards to the company, Toy Seki was founded in 2017 in Tokyo, Japan. It is an integration of R&D production and sales, primarily focuses on the category of action figure. Taking advantage of the high quality and abundant anime manga resources of Japan and Fison's popular seamless bodies, also now known as TB Leak, Toy Seki aims to present clients with all kinds of lifelike action figures. As for the character of Salvaria, she's from the video game Valkyrie Chronicles. A basic summary is that she's a 22-year-old Brigadier General and a member of the Drain Stern under Maximilian's direct command. She's one of the leaders of the Empire's invasion of Gallia and one of the main antagonists in Valkyrie Chronicles and Valkyrie Chronicles 3. In terms of the design of the character, she's designed by the famous artist known as Raita. Personally, I didn't play Valkyrie Chronicles before, but I am familiar with Raita's character design as I know he also designed the characters of Shuten Doji and Minamoto Raiko from the popular mobile game Fate Grand Order. Now let's move on to the aesthetics and paint job of the figure. In terms of the overall aesthetics, I have to say it looks very pleasing. The figure here of Salvaria actually uses the very well-known body from TB League or previously known as Fison. The main selling point of TB League's body is basically that it is seamless and looks very natural. So over here it is no different for our figure today, Salvaria. She looks very aesthetically pleasing and in terms of the design of the body, we don't really see any type of seams. The only one that I've seen so far is at the wrist joints. But in terms of the other joints that we usually see on action figures that would result in a seam, which is the ankles, the knees, and also the elbows, over here on our figure, it is seamless. Let's start with the design of the upper body with the head first. In terms of the head sculpt, something interesting to mention here is that previously under releases from Fison or TV League, they seem to use a more realistic approach to the head design. The face looks more realistic compared to a real life person, also the hair as well. They like to use real material that represents each individual strand of hair, similarly to a real person. But for our release over here under the Toy Siki company, they chose to use a more traditional figure approach in terms of the head sculpt, which is that the face looks more 2D, more anime-like. Also for the hair as well, it is molded plastic instead of each individual strands of hair. So which approach is better, the more anime 2D looking approach for the head sculpt or the more realistic approach used by Fison or TV League? In my opinion, there's no right answers over here. It really depends on personal preference. For example, the more realistic approach used by Fison or now TB League, the hair does look more realistic. You have more posing options because it's individual strands of hair. Unlike the Toy Seki approach over here by using the molded hair, which we can't move the hair strands. But then again, the cons of that is the individual strands of hair can be messy to move around and often or not you need to spend more time on it. So for the Toy Seki approach over here, for the molded hair piece, they will look nice in every angle. That's the pro, but the con is that it is molded plastic and there's no articulation in the hair. So we can't have a more dynamic looking hairstyle in terms of posing. Similarly for the face sculpt, I'm actually glad that Toy Siki company went with the 2D approach. They just molded the face in the 2D anime style instead of choosing a realistic looking face to use for this figure as Fison or TB League would have done if they produced this character. It's not bad per se, again, if you use a more realistic face that's not anime molded features, but sometimes for Fison or TB League, 
doing an anime character, it may be a hit or miss for the face because often or not, a realistic looking person's face used on an anime figure will basically look like someone's trying to cosplay the character rather than the actual character itself. I'm not sure if I explained that correctly or not, but I hope you guys understand what I mean. In terms of the aesthetics of the upper body, there's not much to say about the body itself as TB League or Fison has already been mastering creating seamless body that's anatomically correct and aesthetically pleasing. As for the outfit itself, it seems to be a summer or bikini version of Salveria Bliss's actual battle outfit from the game. So over here, we have the primary colors of black for the outfit with many gold highlights. The gold highlights can be seen on her top in these lines that are nicely painted. Even looking closely at the figure, I don't see any paint defects on the gold lines. They're applied very nicely. In terms of the waist, we also have more gold over here. The design of the belt is very texturized as we can tell and it's done in the same lovely gold color. Moving the figure to a sideways view, actually we have one of the straps attached to the left arm. What's attached into it is actually a small dagger. So this piece is one of the accessories included in the figure. I was supposed to show you guys this later under the accessories section, but when I was playing around with the figure, it was really hard to put on the left arm due to the friction of the seamless body. So after I put it on, I really don't want to take it off again. But anyways, we'll show a closer look at that later. Moving down to the aesthetics, when I was mentioning to you guys earlier about the belt, we also have this extra black buckle piece that's attached to the belt. There's some nice design here as well as paintwork, such as the flower design or some type of pattern flower design of gold done on the black belt part and we have the silver for the buckles with some gold strings or gold ropes something like that attached to it as well in terms of the design here's a closer look to what i'm talking about so later for the silver buckle part we can actually attach her sword accessory so i'll show you guys that in the accessory sections in a bit in terms of the aesthetics of the lower body as she's in this bikini outfit we don't have much clothing for the lower body, but in terms of the body design of the legs, they do look quite aesthetically pleasing as again, it seems like TV League or Fison has already mastered in creating a anatomically correct looking seamless action body. Something worth mentioning here is that because she's not wearing any shoes, she is barefoot, but details over here is not skipped as we can see that she does have a anatomically correct looking feet, which is a very nice touch. Here's another angle of the feet from the bottom. Over here, I do have to mention that there is a negative about the design of the feet because the material of the whole body is used as this sort of rubber material. For the feet part, it is thinner and what happens is we can kind of see through it. What you guys are seeing is not some sort of color smudge. The greenish color that we see over here is actually the inner skeleton showing through. So that I guess is a negative, but overall we'll have the figure most likely standing on her feet. So this shouldn't be much of a problem. Now let's move on to the articulation of the figure. So for the Fison or TB League seamless action body, is basically very articulated. According to the manual, we have 28 points of articulation. So here, maybe I can show you guys a picture of the overall articulation. As you guys can see here, on the left side of this manual, we have many points of articulation that's possible with this seamless action body. Something also very nice that I'm sure many of you guys already know is that for this type of body design, all of the body is made in this rubber material and is actually really soft. So no matter where you touch, it kind of almost feels like a real human body in a way, uh, which is some black magic going on here. So I'm going to try to demonstrate the articulation, but I know for 28 points of articulation, I might miss some, but in general, the head, we have a up and down, side to side. So after a bit, it is hindered by the hair sculpt and the hair sculpt is actually hard plastic. So our head articulation is limited a little bit, but overall, I think it's still all right. And for the arms, we can raise them all the way up. 
all the way down. Let me move the head a bit this way and we can go all the way up again. Be careful because the hairpiece is sculpted plastic so we can raise it all the way. So whatever poses that a human can do, the seamless body can do as well. And it's very nice as you guys can see here and over here at the elbows. There's no seam lines and looks very natural after the bend. For the wrist part, we have a 360 and an up and down. This is the only part of the body that we have an actual seam here. So we can see the inner skeleton structure is actually made out of metal, I believe. As for the waist, we do have a rotation and the side to side, which looks very natural. And we do have ab crunch front. It bends extremely far and backwards which is very nicely done as well. For the lower body, so we can see that you can kick the legs up really high, actually even higher than normal figures, bend at the knee, which looks very natural. And we do have the ankle swivel, and we do have some sort of swivel over here at the thighs as well. But overall, I have to say, be careful about the articulation of this figure, because when moving it around, I can feel the metal part inside. And if you're not careful with it, it may break, as in the metal may poke through the soft rubber skin part of the body. So be careful about that. But as you guys can see, she can even do the splits. I can't really show all the articulation to you guys, but you guys get the idea there's actually 28 points of articulation according to the manual. So is extremely articulated. Here's just a simple pose that I did of her kneeling. And I just wanna point out how natural the kneeling pose look overall. Here's a close up. Check out that toe bend. It looks so natural. So that's big props to Toy Seki and TB League or Fison for their body design. All right, now let's move on to the accessories. So we do have some weapon accessories and attachments included in the figure and some extra hands as well so over here i showed you guys earlier i actually attached this arm strap on her already and it's harder to take off so that's why i didn't take it off because of the friction of this seamless body of this rubber material but anyways here we have this thing that can rotate and inside is actually a small dagger if i can just pull it out it's a bit hard to do this with the camera in front of me. All right, so here we have a small dagger weapon. Put this back and there we go. For the other accessory, we have this piece over here. It's actually a leg strap, similar to the arm strap, except we strap this one on the legs. We have some interesting design here with the red symbol. And over here, I actually attached her other weapons, which is a dagger over here. You can attach to this strap like that, another bigger dagger. And we can clip it like that back in. And there's a clip here too, which we put it on this leg strap as well. It's a pistol, one six scale and nicely done. We can put this one back in and clip, clip it on. Yeah, so we have a accessory like that. Now let's try to attach it to the figure. What we do is basically just insert it and attach to the legs by friction, similarly to the arm strap. Here's the results after attaching to the legs. And the last piece of accessory we have is the sword accessory. It's done very nicely in this black, again, with gold highlights color. We also have this very 3D looking design over here at the handles, which looks quite artistic. So here we have it unsheathed. We have the nice silver color for the blade and we can of course put it back in just like that. And we can attach this to the buckle part that I mentioned earlier over here on the waist part. This is the silver buckle. We just have this peg and slide it in to attach it. So here's what it looks like with the sword attached to the waist. Now we have all of her accessories and weapons attached to her. So this is what she looks like fully armed. As for the hand accessories, we have four sets of hands that we can change to. So first we have the closed fists and then we have these ones which look similar. They're holding hands for the sword and we have the open palms. And then finally we have the trigger fingers. So four sets or four pairs of hands. The final accessory included in the kit is the stand. And the stand is actually 
done pretty nicely. We have the name of Salveria over here in the front. We have this nice looking blue carpet, velvet material, which feels very nice too on the stand itself to make it look more luxurious. Finally, we have this metal piece over here, which is the stand itself. We can actually move this up and down a little bit and secure the figures with this hook over here at the waist. Also, we have multiple insertion points for the stand itself. So I chose to use the middle one, but depending on the pose and what you would like to do, you can actually put this middle stand piece here, 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 or here. So we have that option as well. All right, now let's do some size comparisons. Of course, Salveri over here is a 1-6 scale figure, so she's gonna be quite bigger than a lot of the other figures, especially 1-12 scale. Here we have a Mayfex Batman. As you can see, she's taller than him. We even have the really big Storm Collectibles Bane. She's actually still taller than the Bane figure as well, but this makes sense because she's 1-6 scale. Now let's do some size comparisons with 1-6 scale figures. Here we have a Hot Toys 1-6 scale City Hunter. So as we can see here, Salveria is shorter than our City Hunter over here. But I guess the scale is quite nice as she's female and Rio over here is male. Here's another size comparison with our 3A Doctor Doom. Here is our previously released Toy Seki Company Gantz figures. Anzu and of course Reika. All three of them are from the same company and they look quite good together. The major difference I believe is that what I mentioned earlier for the design of the head sculpt here Salvaria is using a molded hairpiece which looks quite good no matter which angle you pose it but the cons is you can't move the strands of hair. For the previously released Gantz figure from Toy Seki Company we can actually move the hair around so you can have some styling options but they're harder to deal with as they're individual strands of hair. Also it seems like the previously released Gantz figure for the face design, they use a more realistic looking face and for Salveria over here we have a more anime looking like face. So both design in my opinion have their pros and cons but I don't mind either one. What do you guys think? Let me know down in the comments below which approach you like better. The more realistic approach or the 2D looking approach. Alright, so final thoughts on today's figure. The 1-6 scale Salvera Bliss from Toy Siki Company, in my opinion, is a very good release. Especially using that anatomically correct and aesthetically pleasing body that's produced by Bison or TV League, it really gives the figure a lifelike presentation. In terms of the positives, she is very articulated and exceeds all of my expectations. According to the manual, Salveria has 28 points of articulation, so she can pretty much do any pose you want her to do. As for the aesthetics, the hair sculpt and the face design is also done very nicely. I really enjoy that fact that Toy Sticky Company chose to do the 2D route and the sculpted hair for these anime characters as the realistic approach is nice with this 3D looking face but often or not it can be a hit or miss and look like somebody is cosplaying the character rather than the actual character itself. Furthermore, the paintwork is also done very nicely on the figure. Even looking closely at many of the parts on the figure, I can see that there's no major paint defects. Also, the eye colors are done nicely as it represents the anime looking eyes very well. In terms of the negatives, I would say I wish we had some more accessories, especially for the head sculpt. Because the hair is done in this molded plastic piece, we can't move the hair around so it would have been nice if we have another hair piece that's in a different pose. Similarly with the face sculpt, she only have this one expression. It would have been nice if we had a one or two extra face plates that we can actually swap on the figure for a different expression. Another small gripe or just a reminder for you guys who are planning to get the Toy Siki figure is that in terms of the design of the body for the TV League or Fison body, it is nice but the manual recommends that once you pose the figure, you should change the pose every two days, especially if it's a more dynamic pose. And this is because 
the inner skeleton is made out of metal and over time, if you have the figure posed in a certain state, there's a possibility or risk that the inner skeleton may protrude the soft skin material of the rubber on the outer body of the figure. So that's just something to note about and be careful of. So most likely, I'm just gonna keep the figure in a stationary pose that's standing because over time, if you keep it in a dynamic pose like the one that we have in front of us, we do risk the fact that the metal may protrude the rubber body. Anyways, there goes the end of today's review. If you liked the video, please remember to support the channel by liking and subscribing. I would really appreciate that. As always, my friends, remember to stay young at heart and we're out.